Hey, Ex-Mormonology listeners, this is Amy, Amy Logan, and I am your host here on Ex-Mormonology, and I would love to invite you to work with me one-on-one in a mini session. That's it. It's free. doesn't cost you anything, but if you've been life coach curious what it is actually like to work with a life coach, let's sit down together and work through a struggle that you're having. All you have to do is head over to my website at amyloganlife.com and sign up for a time that works for you. If you don't see one there, email me at amyloganlife at gmail.com and we'll find the perfect time for you. Ex-Mormonology, episode 12. All right, you guys, welcome back. Another week, another podcast. (laughs) I'm Amy, Amy Logan. I am a life coach. Uh, You can find more about me over at amyloganlife.com. Make sure you sign up to be on my list. Currently, it's still uh, 10 Post-Mormon Life Hacks. You can find that tab at the top of my website. And then you'll be added to my email list where I send out an email every Friday with some coaching tips and love for you. So go make sure you do that. All right. Today, as I'm recording this podcast, it is March 3rd, Tuesday, and it is voting day if you live here in the United States of America. Hopefully you went out and you did your civic duty and you spoke with your vote. (laughs) Whatever you affiliate with as far as politically, you know, it's so important that we get out and vote. And so I did that today and I'm feeling really good about it. I'm one of those weird people that get teary when I do things like that. Our poor country here needs a big hug. Oh my goodness. And I feel like when I go vote, I'm speaking with my vote. And so I feel like that's a very important thing to do. Plus... If it doesn't go my way, then I can complain all I want, right? (laughs) Because at least I went and I voted and I spoke what I felt was important to me. So I know this is not the, the final election to decide who our president will be here in the United States, but... It sure felt good to go check a box. (laughs) And so that's what I did today. I hope you guys did that as well. If not, make sure you're registered for the election we'll have in November. Super important. All right. I want to talk to you today about trusting yourself. And this is something that comes up time and time again with my clients. And I know for me personally, it was such a hard thing. Like, you know how like there's stages to this faith crisis. So you, you kind of like, go through it. You don't know up from down. You're just going, what the hell just happened to my life? Right. And then if you're like me, you start studying like you've never studied before. And that's what I did. And then you kind of put your head, you know, you, you look up <laughs> and you start going, I feel so stupid. Right. How many of you have thought that? How could I have believed this? And I think this might be where Well, a little bit later probably comes getting mad at yourself. But at first you kind of go, well, if I believed that the church to be true with a capital T, I trusted that. I trusted the people in my life. I felt feelings that made me feel like it was true. Now, how do I know what's true in my life and what's not? Right? I'm sure you have felt that or you're right in the middle of it. I wrote an Instagram post and I'm going to read that to you today because it got my brain thinking about this whole trusting yourself. It has to do with, well, let me just read it to you. Preface this with, well, I swear. (laughs) So I'm trying to keep this kind of clean, but I may every once in a while drop an F-bomb. So just be forewarned. All right. This was my post on Instagram. I made a little meme that said, if your religion tells, counsels, or advises you not to read certain information, quote unquote, in the information, that should be a huge waving red flag, right? Anytime someone restricts information or doesn't want you to look behind the curtain, okay, that's a red flag. But when you're in the middle of Mormonism and you're just doing all the things, you don't really look at it that way. So that was the meme I posted. And then this is what I said. I said, I remember being so fucking scared to read any material that was not approved by the church. We were told to stay away from anti-Mormon literature, like full stop, right? I don't know what I thought would happen if I did, but I believed that I needed to follow the prophet and my leaders. And I didn't want to be disobedient. I was scared. Then one day, after years and years of doubting, I gave myself permission. I decided to deal with whatever happened. Of course, I soon became obsessed. I wanted to read all I could, so I did. 
In the end, I found out anti-Mormon literature is just the history of the church. Educate yourself, my friend. Read everything and then make an educated decision. Any organization that wants to bury, avoid, or control the narrative of their past is hiding something, and you should want to find out what that is. All right, so that's what I posted over on Instagram. You can come find me. I'm over at Amy Logan Life. That's my Instagram handle. And it just really got me thinking about how do you trust yourself now, right? You feel bamboozled. You feel lied to. You feel betrayed, right? And so now you're going, but I trusted myself before. Now I do not trust myself to make another decision. All right, you guys, this is how you do it. You just keep doing it, all right? But now you know that you have to be a little more aware. You're probably more skeptical than you've ever been. Those are good things, all right? (laughs) This is all good and working for you. So the best way to start trusting yourself again or continue to trust in yourself. Like you had to trust yourself to work your way out of the church, right? If you're like me, you finally gave in to those doubts. You decided to study. Guess what? That's trusting yourself. Not trusting yourself would be to step back, remove yourself from making any decisions that relate to you personally, right? That kind of maybe you feel affect your eternal salvation because that's a residual effect. Go back and listen to that episode if you haven't. Right. And so we have these weird fears that are just kind of like laying in the back of our brain, ready to pounce and tell us we don't know anything. You are so far ahead of the game because you are here. You're confused. (laughs) You feel uncomfortable. That's totally normal and healthy, actually. Now, you don't want to get stuck feeling paralyzed by not trusting yourself. But what you do is you continue to read whatever it is. It might not even be a religious thing, it could just be the way you make an informed decision at the voting poll. (laughs) Interestingly enough, it could be something like that. How to raise your kids, right? It's very common to go, now what do I teach my kids? You just start exploring. You stay curious. When you are in question mode, when you're questioning things like you did to get yourself to this point, whether you haven't jumped in yet to study about the history of the church, maybe that's not hugely important to you. But wherever it is that got you to this point, a few of the policies that the church has, some of it's, you know, I don't know how you couldn't be bothered by the history, but some people aren't. (laughs) I was hugely bothered by it. And I was reading so many things. I swear I downloaded and read and studied just to get as much information as I could. Okay, this is what you do. As I am doing that, I'm educating myself. I am building a little vault of information in my head that's going, I'm not going to feel this way again. I don't want to feel taken. And you know, that's kind of how you feel. So I want you to just keep asking questions. When you put your brain in question mode, you are finding your way to solve the problem, right? If you're like, I don't know, I'm scared. I don't know what to do. Like I've been there. That's fine. But you can only stay in that space for so long before you're, you just have to figure this out. At least I did, right? Stay in curiosity mode. Experiment with new ideas and philosophies. Go visit other churches. Go to a synagogue. Go to the library and check out world religions. Like, I never did that, (laughs) you know, as a Mormon. I did not study world religions. I did not even study the origins of Christianity. But once you let yourself start questioning and start searching for answers— you slowly in turn start building up your ability, your trusting yourself muscle, right? You are strengthening your ability to trust yourself. It's okay to feel confused and not know if you're going to get it right. I think that's one of the biggest problems that we as post-Mormons face is because we had all the answers. And so we think since we had all the answers, there must be on the flip side of that, another place where we can arrive at where we can find all the answers. Eventually, you get to the place where you don't have to have all the answers. And when you get to that place, you will feel lighter. You will feel more free than you ever have. And this is super important. I think it's actually good if you're spinning in that space where you don't know and you you feel like you need to, because it makes the journey to getting to the point where you don't need to know all the answers feel so much sweeter. So I say that now that you have gone through this weirdness that is a faith crisis, 
that your blinders are off, right? And so there's a certain way we were as Mormons where we just believed it. Or we just thought, well, my family believes it. My husband believes it. You know, I've been teaching this to my kids, so I just believe it. And then once you start to take off those blinders and you kind of pull back from the world, you get to start doing your own study and research on everything. (laughs) All right. And if you're like me, everything eventually led to me studying not just Mormonism, but then going to Christianity and studying the background there. Now, that's a whole other discussion, but I just love it all because who's right? (laughs) It doesn't matter. You do what's best for you. So to strengthen your trusting yourself muscle, you have to do what feels counterintuitive. You feel like, well, I'll just keep my mouth shut or I just won't worry about it. But it's so important that you trust yourself. Now, that doesn't mean you're always going to get it right in whatever it is. Okay. Leave some room for error. That's okay. That's how we learn. It's just like when a baby is starting to learn to walk, right? They've never walked before. And so, you know, if you have kids and you've watched that amazing process of a baby learning to pull itself up on from a couch, like pulling itself from being on the ground, crawling around, you watch that happen, then they fall down and then they keep falling down (laughs) right? and then they take a step and they fall down. Like you would never look at that baby and go, what is wrong with you, baby? Why are you doing this? Why aren't you walking right away? Right. So you, as a fresh out of Mormonism, I kind of want you to think of yourself that way. No, you're not a baby. And yes, you've been walking for a long time, but you're doing it differently now. And so cut yourself some slack. (laughs) Love yourself up through this process. It is scary. And that's okay, too. It's okay to feel uncomfortable. And it's okay for it to be difficult. I think because our brain is just especially the way we have evolved our brain is hardwired to avoid pain at any cost. And that even means emotional pain. And that's why we buffer with different things, because we're trying to avoid having to feel our feelings. We are trying to avoid anything that feels uncomfortable. I'm saying it's okay to be uncomfortable. It's okay to let your brain hurt and wrap its head around something that it's never done before. All right, now, if you've gone through that paradigm shift, You've experienced this already. It keeps happening (laughs) as you're trying to learn and figure life's puzzle out, right? Well, there's no final piece to put in your puzzle during this life. You just keep learning and evolving and growing. So the only way to learn to trust yourself again is to keep making decisions to move forward, to stay curious, keep asking questions, studying, and keep going until whatever it is that you're going after feels right to you finally. All right, so I wanted to to mention a few of the things that you might be like having a reframe around, right? So you've obviously walked through more walked through Mormonism <laughs> out the other side. And when I was talking earlier about you know, you're going to be stretching your brain and that's why it will hurt and let me give you some more examples of things that maybe you haven't thought about, but you will find that your brain starts to meander Right. Because you don't even realize, especially when you're fresh out of Mormonism, you don't even realize how much your Mormon beliefs have created your opinions about everything. All right. So sexuality. Right. Morality. Like those are two separate things. But your brain will start going, huh, well, if I don't believe in eternal life and I don't believe, you know, like maybe you think maybe it's okay to have sex outside of marriage like before marriage, right? Like things like that. You'll find your brain going to figuring out. You'll resist it a little bit because you're so ingrained, right? (laughs) Again, the residual effect, but that's this is okay. Giving yourself permission to let your brain go to those places. How you want to parent your kids, right? How do you parent your kids without religion? Evolution versus creationism. Your political views, we talked about that. Your view of the afterlife, What does that look like? Is there a heaven? Is there a hell? What if this is it? Your judgments of other people. This was a huge one for me. I was so less judgmental once I let Mormonism go and let it just kind of fizzle away. I felt so less judgmental about people. I felt more compassion than I thought I could. (laughs) 
Well, I think that's kind of ironic. Like your views on money and who makes the money. If you're a woman, this kind of messes with you for a little bit. If you've been in a long, you know, long term marriage that you were married for time and all eternity and your husband was the breadwinner and you didn't do that, this brings up a lot of insecurities and probably fear around you, especially if you're maybe getting a divorce, right? And you're older and you're having to look at the world through what do I do now? Because you created a life in a certain paradigm where, you know, man, woman, man works, woman stays home and has the kids. Now, I know that's not true for every single person who's Mormon, but for a lot of us, it was true. <laughs> that's how we Mormoned. How about money? Your views around money. Who should make the money? Are you capable of making money if you're a woman and you didn't, you know, graduate from school? Maybe education. Maybe that's a different thing that you have to wrap your brain around. Patriarchy. Some of these things are so deeply ingrained in us. So we get scared now because it seems so overwhelming, right? And it's much more comfortable to just pull the covers over our head and ignore the overwhelm. Okay, you don't have to solve all of these issues straight away, <laughs> okay? It can be very overwhelming, but allowing your brain to just explore different possibilities. This does make you a less judgmental person, all right? Relationship dynamics. Maybe your views on monogamy, right? Polyamory. I mean, it's so amazing when you get to open your brain up and just look at things differently. Women's roles and men's roles. You're learning to think for yourself, I think, for the first time in your life. Now, I know this can be tricky because a lot of uh, people who are close to me would say when I would talk to them about some of these things I was learning in the early phases of my faith crisis is, well, do you think I'm dumb? Like, and they still believed in the church. And I was like, well, I know you as a human being and I know I don't think you're dumb, but it is a switch that happens in your brain when you have this paradigm shift that you can't switch for someone else. And that's so frustrating because we as post-Mormons are like, look, it's all here. Just read this. It doesn't work that way. So you have to just keep exploring. Be willing to be open to learning new things and to having a different opinion. Because guess what? You leaving the Mormon church and, and kind of landing where you're, maybe you're not, you haven't landed anywhere, <laughs> but getting to a point where you're comfortable outside of Mormonism, you had to be wrong. Right? You were wrong about Mormonism being true with a capital T. I was wrong. Now, when you are able to say I was wrong and just own it, I was wrong about that. But my cultural conditioning, the environment in which I was raised, my parents, my siblings, my my church leaders, all of that contributes to your your life story and how you came to believe those things. It's okay to be wrong. I think when you can get to the point where you're like, oh man, I was, I was wrong. <laughs> I was fucking wrong about that. All right. What else are you wrong about? Or that you want to change your opinion about? Maybe it's not being wrong, but that you want to form a different opinion about. All right. This is what it looks like to trust yourself. You just keep studying and figuring it out and asking so many questions. Be a question asker. All right. And then just keep making decisions. Be willing to be wrong because you might not figure it out the first go around. That's the part about trusting yourself is being willing to be wrong and getting up just like that baby who fell down. They just keep getting up. Oh, I didn't do it right that time or I didn't do it exactly how I needed to. You have your life to figure things out. There's never a rush. It's no race. We're all going to arrive at a different place, right? With our understanding of life in general. All right, my friends. It's a lot. And I think we could probably do a podcast around each one of those things that I listed off, right? On marriage, on money, on polyamory, on monogamy, on, you know, like all of those things where we at Fresh Out of Mormonism are like, what the heck? There's this whole world going on outside of me and I had no idea. It's exciting. <laughs> I find it exciting. I didn't always. So my wish for you is that you get to that place where it can be exciting that it's not as anxiety filled. Anxiety is something I want to do a podcast on as well, because a lot of us feel so much anxiety when we go through a faith crisis. So we will touch on that a little bit later. But for today, that is it. I hope you guys are doing great. Please know that you can email me anytime. 
amyloganlife at gmail.com. You can sign up for a free mini session with me where I can sit down and coach you for 30 minutes. And of course, I will be talking to you about my ex-Mormonology coaching program. I have an eight-week course that I take people through and teach them these tools. Some of the tools that I've talked about on this podcast, some I haven't, but where I can work with you one-on-one to get very specific to the pain points you're experiencing post-faith crisis. All right, you guys, I love you a bunch, and I'll be back here next week. If you like what you hear on this podcast and you want to take the work deeper, come be my client. Come work with me in a more intimate way, and let's get you feeling better. Amyloganlife.com. Yeah.